I've met older people, I've met uh, children who are talented, energetic, and happy to be a part of it, and uh, that, that's, that's pretty special. So we haven't gotten... Welcome to Nevada County Media, The Musicians. I'm here this week with Peter Johnson. Uh, as you can see, he's sitting right next to me. Uh, we um, have started with our local musicians show here. Uh, about five months now we've been doing this show. Uh, we've been introducing most of the local musicians that we can find, and believe me, there's a lot out there. Um, uh, Peter here, I've known now ooh, for a few years, met in the uh, open mic circuit. Indeed. And uh, I was very impressed when I first met Peter because um, I think his first question was, um, uh, do you, do you, do you want to play some, some songs? Because I remember at that time you were playing with Johnny Mack, who's also mm -hmm. been on this show before, and you were, you were going around and, and finding people to play with. Mm -hmm. And, and I guess write songs. Did you write songs with, with Johnny? or did you I, just No, play no, we songs? just played together. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and one of our old friends, Ken, who unfortunately has passed away, he did the same thing. He, I think he got that from you. He would go around and collect people that he wanted to play with. Um, and uh, that's what I thought that you were doing at the time. And I, I think I remember saying yes, that I, we would get together and play, but we never did. And now I find myself here. After a night of drinking and arguing. Well, yes. Yeah, something, yeah, yes. Something like that. But uh, uh, now we're here, and I want everybody out there to know, here, Peter here is, uh, is really sort of up there in the uh, music scene here. Uh, because first of all, he's one of the owners of the Soundcheck Music. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, uh, which is a, a, a school as well as That's right. a music store. So a lot of the musicians here in town, and especially the younger ones, have probably been to your place to Absolutely. learn. Absolutely. To learn. Right. And uh, also you have uh, Lakes of the Pines. That's right. Studio. And stores, right. And the studio. And the there studio. As well, right. Right. So uh, starts with the questions here. Yes. Is uh, where do you come from? Come from the Bay Area. Recent. Okay. So I grew, born in Oakland and really lived most of my life in the East Bay and moved up here four years ago. Ah, so, but I've known you for more than four years. I don't think you have. I think it, mm. it just seems a lot longer. A lot of people say that. <laughs> well, I've only been here six years, and okay. I remember, I don't ever remember not knowing you since being up here in the music just scene. For, become a fixture. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I knew you before the Soundcheck music. Right. So, so and then I didn't even know that you were interested in, in doing that, uh, you know, that part of music. Um, but, uh, you know... Now I'm really impressed. Um, but uh, now, as far as songwriting, because, mm -hmm. of course, you know, I'm a songwriter, yes. and, and uh, I'd, I'd like to, uh, I've looked around this town and found most of the songwriters that I can to be able to interview here. Um, so the big, oh, you know, question comes is, what's, what in influences you or what makes you want to write songs? Mostly, okay, that's an, it'll, you won't expect the answer. February is my answer. Okay. So it's a month. I, I began songwriting uh, in 2008 by joining a, an online group called Song a Day, in which you endeavor to write, record, and upload a song every yeah, every day in February. And yeah. I signed up for that kind of to talk a friend of mine into doing it. And on February 1st, actually it was the second because I had troubles, I wrote my first song. And so most of what I do actually happens in then, and for some reason that horrific high pressure of it being 11.30 at night and I have nothing in my head is works for me. Ah. So. <laughs> so now I have to correct myself yeah. because it wasn't about playing with you. It was mm. about that. It was mm -hmm. about the writing oh, song probably, when I that's, first met okay, you. Okay, that's probably right. That was right. the thing. Yeah. You said, you know, I'm doing this write a song yes. thing. You know, do you want, you should partake in that. I remember that now. So, so you started to write a mm -hmm. song a day. Yes. So, uh, how many songs would you say you've written since February 2008? <laughs> Probably about 150. Ah. So, it's not exactly a song a day. I haven't, no, and I did, haven't done it every year, and I've never quite managed to do one every day. There's some days, you know, it just doesn't happen, and I don't have that 
maybe I wish I had the discipline to say, okay, forget it. I'm going to just sit down and make something up right now, and there it goes. Because that's part of the reason you do this is to get to push through that barrier of right. not good enough, not ready. I don't like that lyric. Oh, those chords, maybe not. And you say, okay, it's too late. Up it goes, and therefore you kind of punch through the, the difficulties of doing it. What uh, what we would call writer's block. Exactly. That a lot of people uh, do, uh, you know, suffer from. I mean, I've known a couple of really good musicians mm -hmm. from from the early days uh, who all of a sudden you never hear of anymore, and then, you know, they have an interview yeah. like 10 years later, and they say, well, what happened to you? And he's like, I got writer's block. Yeah. I just stopped writing, and, you know. And yet, me, I don't, don't understand it because, you know, I've always, I've just always you know, written little diddles and I'll put like mm -hmm. silly words. Mm -hmm. Most of it comes from conversations for me. Good. Uh, but what is it that inspires the words that you write? Desperation. I, I, is, I, I, a lot of what I've written, it's be, it because, because I do in this high pressure song a day thing, just write something now. I, I do spend a lot of time writing and I keep that up as a semi-regular practice, but most of what I end up filling journals with, I throw away. It's more like that's just cleaning out the, okay, enough of that. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I, I, where do the ideas come from? I wish I knew, or I, w I wish I had a set process. Sometimes it's you just begin the pen moving and see what happens. And so. do you have, when your pen is moving, do you have the music in your head of where those words <laughs> are going to go? Or... Do you put the words down and then try and put the music to those words? Both, I guess. So mostly when it's words, they I when I begin I write I try not, I don't even try to write in verse, but it usually ends up that way. Like you're trying to write prose, and all of a sudden it starts becoming verse. It starts rhyming, and it starts to have some sort of little spine to it. But in general, um, strangely, the last thing I usually write is melody. So I usually come up with an instrumental something or other, and then I have words, and I either develop the words for what I'm thinking of or I find them, and then they somehow come together. It's usually just me kind of chanting the words rhythmically over the music, and after about eight times through that, there, a melody emerges. Huh? Mostly what happens, not always. Oh, interesting. <laughs> interesting, I mean, there's so many different ways. I mean, yeah. I, I don't write like that at all. No, I don't know anyone I, else who does, I, and no. I don't recommend it. No. No, I, I love the idea of saying That's I have a melody That's probably where the word desperation head. comes right, from. And, right, you know. I love the idea of saying I came up with this melody. It's like scrambled eggs <laughs> with McCartney, right? That just rarely happens yeah. for me. Well, because most, most of the time I write, it's like I hear a diddle or I yeah, hear a yeah. diddle, diddle, you know, exactly. a, a, a line or a chord structure that right. goes through. And then I come up with a melody mm -hmm. and then I'm like, okay, well, what does that make me feel? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. what conversation have I yeah. had that, that I can put to this or, you know, or situation or, or, or yeah. things like that, yeah. you know. And it's, uh, I mean, all the different ways. But, sure. But mine is a lot less desperate, you know, <laughs> as they say. So, um, so the other thing is that here with your studio yes. that you have here is that I wanted to make sure that we mentioned this is uh, because you have this idea. You came to me once and you were talking about how you would really like to make this studio a, a place like the Sun Studios right. was in, in Memphis. Right. And uh, please tell them so exactly what it is that you. Which is to say, about. the notion of coming in, setting up mics, playing, and in the course of perhaps a day, but maybe a couple, then it's done. It's not versus the process that most people think of in modern recording where you come in, you, you lay down a few tracks, you think about it, you bring in some other things. Someone says, boy, this track could really use some violin. And, you find, and then weeks, months later, you begin to build this very elaborate thing and then you go into post-production and, and so on and so forth. It's hard to do that when you're not a big signed act with a whole lot of money to throw around and a lot of fancy gear. but you can go in and make yourself sound good like yourself in a small setting quickly. And right. it doesn't, so it does, you don't have to spend a lot of money. You just can get, get a great product that say, that's what I sound like and sell it, hand it out, whatever you want to do. So I've spent a lot of time in the past year working on recording acoustic guitar well. It's one of the hardest instruments to record and also voice, another diff challenging one to do. So that covers a lot of people really. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, so well, I'm glad because I want them to mm -hmm. out there to know that uh, there is a place. And now, where yeah. is this? It's Lakes of the this Pines. This is at Lake of the Pines, and right at the um, on Wolf Road, right behind Best Gas. So it's Lake of the Pines Music is the store there, and then across the hall is the studio. Yeah, well, so everybody yeah. knows that's where you can go and record your stuff, just the way that he explained to you to record it. Uh, we're going to go to a commercial right now, uh, and when we come back, we're going to have Peter play a few songs for us. Okay, we'll be right back. Under 
sun Pretty new one from uh, from February 14th of this year. It's called Hold On Back. Everything's better when I do it with you. Life is better when the power of two just hold.
song with a lot of words. Um, this is called Perfect Body in a Failing Mind. Caffeine talking, it's the chill in the air, it's the multiple chemical dependency makes it seem like I'm not there. I can't recall your words, cause it's ADHD. Well, I think I promised rescue, but now it's me who can't break free. Now I'm adrift without a paddle to my name. I'd make mistakes if I had a reference to frame. There's no scientific explanation for my state. Oh, I will proceed without the answer at any rate. And when the second verse came, well, I'd just make it up. Sometimes I thought that would never fail, but it appeared I drained that cup. There's no point in trying And there's no wasted mistakes Mirrors lie, your magic's real This world is bona fide fakes Now I'm adrift without a paddle to my name I'd make mistakes if I had a reference to frame There's no scientific explanation for my state Oh, I will proceed without the answer at any rate. Oh, the perfect body and the failing mind, losing grip on ties that bind. Keep the pith, discard the rind, and choose a path you'll never find. I can hear you, I'm not blind. What you forget, I can't rewind. This was a random encounter of the calculated kind. Keep going forward, there's no rewind Cruel to say, but fool to be kind Perfect body and a failed mind He's removed and she's enshrined Does this blank on paper's line Raise the glass, the stakes, the table To the tabula rasa of the damaged mind songs okay okay I, I came with three but I'll do another Take you down 
if it comes to a fight. Back off, comma, don't need to have words with you. Back off, comma, you can't tell me what to do. be able to tell jokes while I tune, but I can hardly tune without. So I walked into a bar. Sounds like it's a joke. Uh, but it's true. Um, and I it was during this song, song a day month in February, and I said to the bartender, while I'm doing this project, I try to write a song every day. Um, can you give me an idea for a song? And he said, no idea. The song is called No Idea. door all night in the freezing pouring rain had your name tattooed on my shin and screamed it through the pain I don't want to hear that there's no way I'll be back again I'll be there every day but I've no idea how to sell myself to you no idea what to How to make you take an interest in me So please help me see Broadcast my 
my intentions on public internet sites. Programmed, I love you to flash in Morse code and the traffic lights. It may be a bad idea, but it's a start. Well, I won't give up trying to win your heart. But I've no idea how to sell myself to you. No idea what to do. No idea how to make you take an interest in me. So please help me see. Won't you help me see? Oh, please help me see. Set me. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Johnson. We'll be right back after this commercial. Well, welcome back. Look what I've got here. New. <laughs> you know, I have Roots Division with us now. Now, this is interesting for me because, you know, most of the musicians that I, I put up here are, you know, old folks like me. Uh, this is great because, you know, I have like, how old are you? 17. 17? 16. 16 and 17 year olds. Now, I'm blown away because, of course, this is the kind of... Uh, um, this is the kind of show that I've always wanted to do, to be able to show Nevada County the, the local musicians that are up and coming and that, of course, you know, at this age, they've got their whole careers ahead of them instead of most of us who have come here before of, you know, most of our careers are behind us. So here we have Roots Division. Now we have Nico pa Paoletti. Me. Nico Paoletti. Yeah. Manny. Yes. Uh, and your last name? Cervantes. So they're called Root Division, and uh, let them tell you why is it that you play music? Yeah, I mean, I, I just grew up with my dad playing a lot of blues music, rock and roll in the car and stuff, and he was always really into it, and I just took an interest to it from a young age and started playing guitar when I was about nine, and yeah, just I knew what music I really liked. I liked the blues, rock and roll. Uh, for me, I used to listen to heavy metal and rock, or like harder rock, and then I heard Jimi Hendrix, and then Jimi Hendrix led me to like Muddy Waters and all those guys. And uh, I, don't, I don't know, dude. It just gives me like a feeling that no, no other music has. That's what we like to hear. Yeah. Now the harmonica. Why the harmonica? Well, uh, like a year and a half ago, I heard this uh, guy named Blind Al Wilson from Canned Heat. And uh, he's playing with John. He was doing this uh, song with John Lee Hooker called "Drifter," and the sounds he made on a harmonica just blew my mind. So I, ever since then, I've just have it in my pocket pretty much 24/7. But I started playing guitar before I uh, started playing harmonica. But, so yeah. you both play guitar. Do you guys ever play guitar together? Or, yeah. Or, yeah? Oh, yeah. Well, that's great. And you, you just started to play in the blues because of your dad and stuff like that. But yeah. uh, I mean, specifically the blues turned you on because. 
sounds nice. Well, I mean, some some uh, artists that you heard yeah, that you were like, um, wow. I like uh, the Almond Brothers a lot. Um, Muddy Waters, BB King, Jimi Hendrix. Um, yeah, all those all those old classics. Yeah. So s look, yeah. guys, all those old fo folks are still influencing the youth of today. Absolutely. This is going to be great. Um, yeah, so I heard you guys play last night, um, and, and I was kind of uh, blown away. I mean, my, um, my nephew, who goes to school with them, uh, said, you guys, you've got to put these guys on the TV. So uh, I said, bring them down, and we'll play at the uh, open mic. And so we played at the open mic, and uh, um, <laughs> he brought this old tube amp. And I have to mention it, because yeah. I'm just, I, as I said, talk about being blown away. He brought this old tube amp and started playing the harmonica through it. And I swear I could close my eyes and I could go to Muddy Waters. I could go to those, you know, the old uh, uh, blues players and I could hear it, it in there. So where did you get that amp from? Um, this, uh, my music mentor uh, that I do through, uh, go through my school with, uh, Rick Kirkpatrick, he found uh, found it in a shed actually with a, <laughs> it had like a bee's nest, well like part of a bee's nest like on the front of it. So we took it to this dude named uh, John Fox who's just really, 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 really good at fixing stuff. And uh, he took it apart and redid like the whole inside. And uh, it's, ah, I love that amp, I play it all the time. It's such a killer amp. I think we know John Fox. I think he was on the show a couple of <laughs> a while back. Uh, but yeah, he is a handyman and he does fix it. And yeah. did, you, did you ever play with him? No. Oh, because he's a really good player himself. Yeah. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hear some blues from you guys. Um, and maybe at the end of it, uh, I can jump up and play with you a little bit so that yep. we, uh, you know, we can roll out the show with a little uh, yep. jam session. Yeah. That's going to be fun. That'd be cool. So uh, we're going to pop off to a commercial right now, and we'll come back with Roots Division. <laughs>
you go down to the deep end and put your money in your shoes. The women in deep Bellum give you that deep Bellum blues. Oh, sweet mama, your daddy's got the deep Bellum blues. Oh, I said, oh, sweet mama, your daddy's got the deep Bellum blues. Next we're playing Stormy Monday. Call it Stormy Monday. Tuesday. This day's past. Call it Stormy Monday. Today I go out to play The eagle flies on Friday Saturday I go to church get down on my knees and pray Saying, Lord have mercy Lord have mercy on me I'm 
mercy. Lord, have mercy on my soul. I said, God, forgive me. Lord, have mercy.
Sí. Thank you guys, thank you very much. Uh, I'm gonna pick up a guitar now and play some uh, with you. Let's do uh, just like a little 12 bar in E. How's that, your, uh, your, your, what you got there? Uh, yeah, I, I play with you. Yeah. Right, and, okay. Um, let me see, right over here, why don't I just, I just stick this here in the middle, yeah. and this way it'll get me. Go ahead, you can move over that side. Okay. I'm going to be in the middle of you guys. Okay, so, you know, this is the talent that you've got. You know, people out there, you hear this, because in my mind, these guys aren't even old enough to play the blues. <laughs> I was always told you can't play the blues until your heart's been broken. And I know that these guys haven't had their hearts broken yet. <laughs> you know? So uh, let's just play, uh, this is a little song, it's called Rockabye Baby Blues. Because <laughs> I'm playing with the babies, so. <laughs> so I'm just going to go. Baby 
Picks me up, locks me to the stereo.